Swayam Prabha Digital India Educated India to everyone. So, we are now uh, uh, having a lectures in this course titled Thermo Mechanical and uh, Chemical Treatments. So, it has got actually two parts. So, the lectures for the Thermo Mechanical Treatment will be covered uh, you know as a separate set of lectures and uh, I will be covering a set of lectures it will be on Thermo Chemical Treatments. So, in this lecture uh, first of all I would like to give the overview about what is the purpose of uh, you know this topic and what are the uh, topics which will be covered. So, <coughs> objective of uh, materials engineer is to develop the materials having a good service life and uh, performance. Right. We should have a components which will have a good surface li service life and the performance. So, the properties of uh, any engineering component whatever we measure or whatever we feel while they are in service they are dictated by the microstructure of the material being uh, used in this preparation of these components. So, our objective is to develop components with better properties. So, in that process uh, what we want to know is that the internal microstructure. So, I hope uh, you all are aware about what is a microstructure. It is like when we look into a microscope and what are the inner details of the material, how the constituents are present inside that would dictate the uh, properties of material. So, what is important is that we need to know the way to quantify and the, so the way we need to know the way to quantify uh, quantify and then you know the optimize the microstructure features which are present in the material for example uh, and now once we know that fundamentally what is the relation between the microstructural uh, quantities and the measured properties then we need to also find the relationship between these microstructural constituents and the process parameters. For example, a component is being produced by forging or by you know the heating it up to some conditions, then we need to find the relation between these properties uh, with these parameters that is what actually a, uh, a, a technical person will be doing while producing the components. Okay. So, that is what is actually the important thing that the establishment of relation between controlling variables and the microstructure. So, what are all the things which will be controlling the microstructure and thus the properties of the material. Okay. If you look in detail for example, the chemical composition that means, what we have added into the particular steel. So, what are all the internal you know the uh, chemistry like if you have a steel how much will be the let us say the amount of carbon, how what are the different alloying elements being added into the steel. So, this itself can actually in principle control the properties and next is the phase constitution. For example, we have a uh, defined chemistry but by using certain means of controlling the phase transformation that means, we are not changing the composition with that we will be able to change the internal constituents that means, for example, if we consider the steels like we can control the amount of let us say the cementite or the retained austenite these things can be controlled and that will also be able to dictate the properties. And the other thing is about the being the composition constant and the phase constitution constant one can also refine the uh, individual grains 
that means we can control the crystallite or the grain sizes which is known to also alter the properties. So, this becomes a one way to tune the properties and then actually the defects engineering. So, which is not very well uh, uh, established as an engineering method, but still we know that for example, by doing a cold deformation we can change the properties of the material right? by introducing defects like dislocations or planar faults, then we will be able to uh, change the properties. And the, the another uh, aspect is the crystallographic texture which is also in a very few applications which is possible to engineer this. So, by because this comes uh, as the crystals are known to have anisotropic properties. For example, if you take a single crystalline solid and if you are measuring the properties along different crystallographic directions. For example, it can be some magnetic property or it can be a you know the strength of the material then it will show actually the different properties along different directions. So, in a polycrystalline aggregate by controlling the fraction of this you know the orientations which are dominant. For example, we have a sample having certain dimensions and now you have a sample surface. Now, with respect to this sample surface how the different grains in the sample are oriented crystallographically whether we see all the 1 over 1 planes being parallel to the surface not all I mean majority. So, that is what actually uh, can give rise to a uh, properties which will be different. So, by knowing that what is required and then one can favorably alter the properties by controlling the crystallographic texture. So, the other aspect is we do not do all these things like we do not change any of the things, but we will only change the residual stress state for example, at the surface. We know that most of the failures or the any cracks nucleate and start to propagate into the material from the surface. So, for example, if we have a component right and on its surface let us say that there is a defect like this. And now, if there are no macroscopic stresses acting on it on this component that means, it is stress free. Then if you apply the load, then there is a critical load at which this crack starts to progress inside and you know we can see the failure. Now, for example, we have a situation same situation where we have already have a residual stress which is being acting on the top surface. For example, compressive residual stress acting on the top surface and that is a very thin region right. This is the top surface and remaining portion is feeling a little bit of tensile stress to you know have the uh, you know the stability for the shape. And then in case of uh, the same uh, defect to progress it requires much or the higher effective load that means, this p will be more than this p. So, that is how actually one can control the uh, failures in components by engineering the residual stress. So, now actually the most of the failures like for example, fatigue. So, where actually the uh, defects from the surface starts to propagate into the uh, material. So, that can be quite well you know the uh, minimized or fatigue resistance can be enhanced by engineering the residual stresses. So, now when it comes to the uh, actual applications then one can think of two properties for example, bulk properties of a component and the surface properties of a component. So, why these things are have to be uh, understood separately and engineered you know the independently or you know the uh, always considered together in deciding the uh, certain properties. So, the bulk properties means actually what would be the you know the impact strength of that material being used as well as the what is the its uh, formability. That means, you know if you have a material you want to make some cylinder by deep drawing then it should have a good drawability. Okay. 
So, that is the one aspect one has to keep it in mind while uh, choosing the material before we start making a component. So, it should provide a structural stability and it will give a impact strength that means, it should be able to withstand the you know the uh, high deformation energies and it should have a good formability. Having these things set right, you will be able to manufacture the component that once you have a component then you know that the surfaces of the component are actually interacting with the atmosphere. For example, it can be a certain mechanical load which will be felt in you know the maximum by the surfaces first. So, that is where actually the surface properties are important. Then once you have a component of a desired this one then we would like to have that it should have a good wear resistance. So, most uh, engineering components feel the you know the wear by uh, you know the with the environment with which they are operating with. So, for example, if you take a gear. So, the gears are under constant wear and tear right. So, we would like to have the gear teeth you know the where you have the loading. So, that that surfaces of the gear teeth should have highest wear resistance to have a long service life. So, uh, that is the one aspect and next is the fatigue resistance. So, if you have a for example, a spring ok. And then these springs are under constant you know the uh, variation in the loads they will be operating. So, they should have a good fatigue resistance because you have a cyclic loads being experienced by this uh, springs. So, that is where actually we would like to have the you know the uh, springs should have a good uh, fatigue resistance. So, this also have to be engineered by the residual stress state at the surface of these springs. So, the, the other one is the corrosion resistance. So, because always these components will be in uh, contact with the atmosphere it can be a you know the oxidizing or it can be a reducing. So, that is where actually it should have a good uh, corrosion resistance. So, that is where actually we can prolong the life of the components. So, enhancing this set of properties you know the wear resistance corrosion resistance and fatigue resistance. So, falls under the criteria of you know the where we have a set of methods which are called surface engineering methods. So, where we would like to change the surface or cover the surface you know the either we modify the existing surface or by putting a, a different layer on this surface we will be able to get the required properties for the surface. So, when it comes to the mechanical property uh, uh, related criteria, we want to have a tough core that means, if you have a component the core means inside material should be tough that means, if you have an impact load it will not break into pieces. But at the same time we want to have the skin of that the case of this component which is hard and you know that it can provide a good wear and you know the uh, fatigue resistance. So, that is becomes usually the strategy for you know the uh, engineering components with a good life and serviceability. So, how we can modify the surface properties? As we discussed when we do the uh, when we engineer the surface properties then we should also keep it in mind that we have to make sure that the core properties as it is desired should be also engineered or should be retained without disturbing. That means, you have a component by doing the processing methods and the treatments you have fixed its bulk microstructure you know that it has got a certain composition certain phase constitution it has got a defined properties for example, a yield strength and the you know the uh, impact strength and all that. Now, whatever we want to achieve with the surface, when we say the surface it is actually a region uh, of certain depth from the surface that should have a, a property which is different from the bulk. So, that means, we should be able to only change the property of the surface or we choose the method such that both being optimized in a uh, consistent manner. 
So, how we can modify the surface region microstructure? For example, we have a component having certain bulk property and I treat this as the surface ok. This is the surface region and now we want to have a different property only to this surface. So, one possible way is that by using the thermal treatments, thermal treatments imply means we only change the temperature and uh, the heating and the cooling rate of the particular region of a material and that leads to change in the properties because we introduce a phase transformation. So, we will be looking at that when we discuss in detail about the different uh, uh, surface treatment methods. So, where we apply only the uh, thermal treatments or the heat treatment, then we should have a technique by which we can only change the temperature of the surface region. For example, only this region we want to have a change the to different temperature uh, and then we will actually cool it down ok, then followed by cooling. So, we want to change the property. So, you all know about you know the phase transformations. So, if not then uh, I would say that that becomes a basic requirement to follow this uh, kind of courses. So, you have a steel which has got a certain uh, you know the carbon content, it is a medium carbon steel for example and then somebody has made a component and then this component has been heated and cooled and then tempered. That means, you have produced a martensite which will be very hard and then you tempered it so that it has got a uh, optimal values of toughness and the uh, tensile strength. So, now you want to change only the surface property, objective is to have the surface which is more harder than the bulk. So, then what we have to do is we need to heat up only the surface skin to the temperature where it becomes for example, austenite. So, then after the heating you cool it rapidly ok then you produce martensite at the surface. This will be very hard region at the surface. How one can do that? You can have either an induction heating of only the surface, you have a created an you know the induction heating. So, I travel this induction heat source, so that it heats the surface and then produces the required uh, temperature rise and then it gets cooled the moment you move the heat source away or you can you have a laser. So, you have a laser beam which is being passed on the surface. So, this will heat up a skin of the material to very high temperature and as it moves away it cools very rapidly. So, that is the thermal treatments. Other possibility is you can do the heating as well as by introducing deformation. So, for example, let us think about mechanical treatments. We know that by doing a mechanical deformation we can alter the properties because we introduce defects into the material that is known to change the properties. So, for example, if we have a uh, sample and the th surface region being mechanically deformed ok and producing the defects and that will have a different kind of properties. So, it is called as a strain hardening of the material and now actually what one can do is that you can actually club the heat treatment together with the mechanical treatments and that falls under the category thermomechanical treatments ok. This will be dealt in detail in the other part of this course. So, that I will not go into the details here. The third possibility is the thermochemical treatments. So, what we want to do is we want to use the thermal energy that means, we want to change the temperature we are heating and cooling of the surface region and at the same time we would like to also change the composition of the material at the surface. So, if you have a such a you know the sample and this is the surface, I have this region which I want to 
change its chemistry ok. In such a way that that chemistry upon heating and cooling leads to a improved properties. So, how we can do that? So, you need to introduce some element for example, element B into the surface region. So, that it uh, changes the composition of this region and then when we cool it rapidly it actually gives rise to a microstructure which has got the different properties. So, if I plot here percentage B as a function of distance. So, we will see that you have such a profile. So, so this enriched region of the B yeah, this is the B enriched region will have a property that is what is uh, maybe can be engineered amount of B and what is the depth that can be controlled. So, this is the this is what we will be discussing in this uh, part of the lectures. So, where we will go into the details of the thermo uh, so called thermo chemical treatments that means, where we are trying to change the chemistry of the surfaces and to change the properties. So, now when you want to change the chemistry then you need to choose particular elements uh, element or a combination of elements which you want to introduce into the surface regions of the material. So, often you see that most popular methods utilize actually the interstitial elements. Interstitial element means the uh, elements which are small in size and they can occupy the interstitial voids in the host lattice of the matrix. That means, if you have a pure iron for example, and you have a BCC iron lattice and then you have a voids being created between these big iron atoms and there are called octahedral voids and tetrahedral voids. And those regions can be occupied by the small elements such as interstitials like carbon, nitrogen, boron ok. And one can think of hydrogen too, but it is often known to create a uh, non favorable properties. So, usually these are the, the uh, carbon, nitrogen and boron being used quite extensively in this kind of uh, interstitial elements. So, another reason why interstitials are favored is for example, you have a component and you want to feed in for example, some elements these are the elements you want to feed into the surface. And then the things which come into picture is the once the elements reach here that involves actually the solid state diffusion. It is known that interstitial elements have high diffusivity should be the uh, requirement for the elements being introduced into the surface region. So, substitutional elements have less diffusivity yeah, low D. So, the substitutional elements have a lower diffusivity. So, we want to choose the interstitial elements because which have a high diffusivity, but that means at a reasonable temperature in a reasonable time you will be able to diffuse them into the certain depth of the material. So, now actually once you think of like uh, what elements you want to use to enrich the surface and then one has to know what are the sources for these elements. For example, we want to use the carbon as an element being diffused into the surface region in order to modify the re surface region chemistry. Then we need to have a source that means, whatever the you know the source which supplies the carbon and then that has to be chosen by considering the thermodynamics and kinetics of that particular source when it tries to equilibrate with the your work piece. For example, how this works is that you have a furnace ok. and then you place your work piece and then you need to create here the environment and this will have a source of let us say carbon 
and then this should provide the carbon and then this carbon will come to the surface of this workpiece and then can diffuse inwards. So, now this uh, entire process in order to choose the particular environment or the source of this element requires that at this given temperature and pressure what are the thermodynamics of this you know the source and how the kinetics of this transfer of the element from this environment into the workpiece that has to be taken into consideration. So, that is about the choice of chemical uh, sources and now actually for example, if we consider the our objective is to enhance the mechanical property of the surface that means, we want to harden the surface. So, we know that there are different hardening mechanisms ok, if we have a material if we want to make it harder. So, there are different ways to do that one is so called precipitation hardening that means, you want to have a another second phase being present as a particles and which are dispersed in the matrix and these particles have a higher you know the uh, mechanical properties. Then you create actually so called precipitation hardening. So, the entire composite material that means, you have a one phase with dispersion of the second phase within that that will have a different properties that is called as a precipitation hardening. And other possibility is solid solution strengthening. For example, if you have a pure iron austenite and if we keep on adding the carbon into it depending on the amount of carbon we can increase the hardness of the material ok that is called solid solution strengthening. Another way is that you change the entire surface region material into a new phase that means, you to a new compound for example, if you have a uh, iron surface that is a steel surface you change that to some other compound like a cementite or you know the iron carbide or iron nitride or iron boride. So, when you change that then you also change the uh, its uh, property ok that is what is a change in the complete phase of the your material. So, now in this process now I would like to talk about actually what are the things uh, you know the one at least one model example by which I want to explain how the different things can be realized by using different treatments. So, before we go further, so I would like to summarize what we have discussed until now ok. Yeah. So, we have discussed about what is the importance of controlling the microstructure of the materials and what are the parameters which actually dictate the microstructure and thus the properties of the material. And now, when it comes to the engineering components, so we need to understand that it requires certain level of bulk properties and certain level of surface properties in order to be able to provide uh, good life and serviceability. So, that means actually we need to have a surface modification methods or how we can change the surface properties. So, in that context we have discussed about thermal treatments on thermo mechanical treatments and thermochemical treatments and the purpose of this lecture is about the thermo chemical treatments. And then we have discussed about what are all the uh, elements can be chosen in order to change the chemistry of the existing component surface. So, there we saw that interstitials would play a would be of a host uh, good source because they have a uh, small they are small in size they can diffuse faster and that means, in a reasonable time and at a reasonable temperature we would be able to reach a uh, certain depth of the specimen surface being modified. So, with this now I would like to move on to the next lecture where I want to first explain actually uh, two very popular surface the thermochemical surface treatments these are called carburizing and nitriding ok that will be the part of our next lecture. Mm -hmm.